Hello, Honors Math and Al. I believe that uh, yesterday you were working on these 16 problems from page uh, 749 of the book. Um, I think I left you the answers on the lecture, but I will review those with you really quickly. Here are answers one through six. Obviously, pause the video if you want to take a longer look, right? And then seven through 12, we were finding the sum of an arithmetic sequence. Um, we were finding what an arithmetic series added up to. Um, this is actually not, this is missing a couple steps of work you would need to show. This is just using the formula to get the sum. I, uh, I worked out number 12 down here for you um, to show you what you really want to have this looking like on a test. So we, we have our sequence, and we need to create a series out of that by adding those together, right? So um, we'll go ahead and do our summation notation. Formula tells us to start at one, as I mentioned. You can tweak that a little bit and start at zero or start at two. I highly uh, recommend you don't do that though, because then you have to adjust the formula, you have to adjust the endpoint, everything. Um, everything becomes a little different if you do that, so be careful with that. Uh, we do not know the 29, right? And so that's where you have to set up your, your formula and um, solve for how many terms out the, tw the number 27 is. How many terms do I have to go out to get this 27? Um, well, let's write the formula so we know what, uh, what's going on here. You could use, this is in your notes, right? first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. But I would just say, hmm, this seems to be going down by 3 each time, minus 3, minus 3. So I'm just going to say negative 3n, negative 3i, whatever variable you want to use, right? And then make the adjustment. And so that's how I came up with my formula right here. I started with the negative 3i, but I knew that negative 3 times 1 was negative 3. I need to get all the way back up to a positive of 111 for my first term. So that's why I had to add um, 114. And that's my formula, negative 3i plus 114. So I set that equal to the last term. And then it's just a two-step algebra problem. Uh, subtract 114, divide by negative 3. Ah, 29. 27 is the 29th term of this sequence. So that's where this value comes from, right? And now we just have to use the, uh, the formula, um, which is the number of terms multiplied by the um, sum of the first term and the last term divided by 2. Remember, Gauss uh, kind of showed us how to do that. And once we uh, simplify it, multiply, I mean, the rest of this is pretty much on the calculator, right? We get 2,001. So this is what I'm trying to, I guess, demonstrate for you here. Um, there's two pieces that have to be linked. The summation statement is what we call this. That tells us what we're summing and for how long. And then the formula. Now, I will review with you how you could easily do this on your calculator um, with the summation uh, template. But like I mentioned, that, that will be locked up in, in pressed test mode. So you, you have to know these two summation formulas, the arithmetic sum formula and the geometric sum formula, OK? So first uh, number of terms times first term plus last term divided by 2. That's it. Um, if you can do that, you're in good shape. Now. Um, a lot of people take this work right here, and because they need to find that to, to, you know, to finish this statement right here, they end up starting to write this and then plugging this in the middle, and then eventually they come back over here and finish with the rest of it. You can't really do it that way because um, this side work here, this side work's not really directly connected to these. These two things are equal. These two things are equal to each other. This is just a little piece, right? This is just a little piece of the summation statement in the formula. So um, please uh, be careful about 
um, doing that. Do that do that side work off to the side, as it is called, and make sure you connect these two pieces directly because they are equal to each other. Um, I guess I told you I would show you, you could check your work using the calculator. Let me remind you how to do that. We had a formula of negative 3, let's call it x plus 114, and x was our index. We start at 1, and we found that there were 29 terms in the sequence, and you can see that we do get the same answer, 2,000. And one. Um, let's uh, let's go back and get to those geometrics. I know those geometric problems are a little bit more challenging. So um, once again, go ahead and pause if you want to look at these answers: 13, 14, 15, and then way down here, 16. Um, Looks like I have worked out number 13 for you, so let's walk through that little step right there. This, we can tell right away, is not arithmetic because it doesn't go up by 3 and then by 3 again. But what it does do is it doubles, and then it doubles again. And so this is a doubling sequence. I, I really recommend you know this formula well. This is the general era, um, geometric formula. Uh, so this tells you how to write you know, those, those uh, sequences. Um, so you can plug them into the series. Uh, A1 is the first term. So A1, 3 is the first term, right? So we're going to multiply by 3. R is the common ratio. So R is, was, what was it doing? It was doubling each time, times 2 times 2. And then we always write it to the n minus 1. Once again, some people will say, well, if I start at 0, I can just start at i instead of i minus 1. That's true. But then you also have to adjust the top, and then you also have to go into your formula and adjust the values in your formula. So um, it is highly advisable you just always start at 1 um, with the uh, sequence. Now, as we saw with the arithmetic sequence, this geometric sequence, we don't know how many terms out, right? We don't know how far out we have to go to get to 12,288. But now that I have my formula, I can set my formula equal to 12,288 and solve. Uh, I'll walk you through this really quickly. We divided by 3. Then I converted it into a logarithmic equation. So the base was 2. And 4096 became the argument. And that was equal to i minus 1. Um, you could plug this directly into your calculator if you uh, want to use the log template. But remember, press the test locks that off. So all you're going to have um, available is log base 10 log and natural log. I generally use natural log. And so you can see I did natural log of the original argument divided by natural log of the original base. And it was 12. It's not an integer. We got a problem because the index only counts integers. Okay. Don't forget to add one. Some people are so excited at this point that they're like, ooh, 12 and they forget they didn't solve for i yet. So that's where the 13 came from um, on this problem, number 13. And now we just have to execute the sum formula. So what is the sum formula? It looks like I strategically did not bring it onto this formula. So I'm going to go grab it for us really quickly. And just to remind you what it is, it is the um, first term, A1, okay, A1, and then multiply by 1 minus the common ratio to the number of terms in the series. So that's why that solving for n is so important right here. And then you divide that by just 1 minus the common ratio by itself. Uh, remember, you can't cancel any of these terms because of the subtraction. Okay, so be careful about that. Um, so here we go. Uh, the first term was a 3, so we're going to plug that in. A bam, a bam. The uh, number of terms we found was 13, right? So we're going to put a 13 here. 
and then we just have to um, do what we can and let the calculator do the rest. Like you could do one minus two is uh, negative one. That's pretty straightforward. You could then turn the three out front into a negative three. That's fine. But the one minus two to the thirteenth is probably going to be something you want to do on your calculator, specifically the two to the thirteenth. So these types of problems, bigger numbers, are certainly going to be more uh, of the calculator type of problem on any assessment that you take um, who knows when, right? Um, so that is the answers and a couple explanations. Uh, I have a couple of these worked out for you. Um, we're not actually finding sums on these. Some of them we can't find the sums because they're infinite, but uh, we can just walk through this really quickly. Number one, looks like it goes up uh, six, up six again, and then up six again, right? So it's really just going up six each time. Now, of course, six times one is not equal to negative seven. Um, six times one is equal to six. So how do I get from six back to negative seven? We subtract 13. I think that's the easiest way of doing that type of a problem. Okay. Um, you plug that into our summation statement. So we would start at one and we don't know how far we need to go, right? How far is this? So that's where you would set your off to the side, 6n minus 13 equal to 53. I think what we would do is add 13 to each side, divide by uh, 6, 66 divided by 6 is 11. There you go. So that was your answer for number one. Um, number two is uh, likewise a very similar um, arithmetic type of formula. This time, we're only going up by three each time, okay? So up three, up three, up three. That's how I know that it is arithmetic. Um, I think in algebra one, we would just call that linear. Um, but three times one is not equal to two. Three times one is three, so I have to drop one to get back to the two. That's my first term. And now I have my formula. And now the only question is, um, how far do I go, right? Well, if I set three, n minus one equal to 29, adding one would be 30, dividing by three would be 10. And of course, you would want to show that work on a quiz or test, wouldn't you? Yes, my three and six. Um, three and four, it basically gave you the, the answers uh, right here. Um, it just said, hey, this is a squaring sequence. This is a cubing sequence. Um, notice that they, they started at one, so one squared is one, one cubed is one, so we're starting at one. Um, but we're not ending at n, we're ending at n plus one. And as we saw in the answers, that's where we ended. And then there's the last two geometric sequences. Once again, all we were doing really is just following this formula. First term, um, so for number five, it was six. For number... Um, for number six, it was five. Huh, that's interesting. And so that's where the six and the five came from. And um, one thing of note is that these were both uh, geometric uh, alternating series. So you can see the minus and then the plus and then the minus and so on. So that means that we're not just multiplying by a common ratio, but a common ratio that has to be negative. Uh, for number five, it looks like it was doubling, so that's why we went with the negative two. And for number six, which is tripling each time, we went with the negative three. So that's why those are um, negative numbers. And then you put your I minus one and you're done. So um, that's a quick walk through those um, six where you really weren't finding the sums, you were just finding the um, summation statement, more or less, okay? Um, Let's move to the arithmetics really quickly. And we already did 
number 12, uh, we looked at that one. Um, just glancing at these. Number seven was going up by four each time. Number eight was going up by seven each time. Number nine was going up by one each time. 10 was going up by two each time. Number 11 was kind of like number 12. It was going down. It was going down by seven each time. Um, you know, there, uh, I could pick one of these at random and do it for you. Uh, we already did number 12, which was going down. Maybe we'll do number eight real quickly for you. Um, but I think uh, most of you guys, once you see a couple of these arithmetics, they, they move pretty similarly. Um, if you want me to do any more of these, uh, remember we're going to meet again today at 3 online, and I'll work out any of the others that you'd like to see. Um, so what did we just say? We said that this dude is going up by 7 each time. So let's start with the 7n. And 7 times 1 is certainly not negative 8. How do I get from 7 back to negative 8? I think I need to subtract 15. You know what? While we have that formula, why don't we go ahead and set it equal to 27 just to see how many terms out I am. So 7n is equal to 42. Once I add 15 to both sides, n is 6. So it's 6 terms out. That's not very many uh, terms, is it? Well, I guess I could have just counted because they showed me all six terms right here. So that's kind of boring. Um, but don't, don't just plug them into your calculator. You need to practice setting these up, right? Uh, we're going to go with a summation statement. Uh, I'm going to say that we are starting at 1 and going to 6. And we're going to do 7n minus 15. So there's the summation statement. Now we just have to apply the formula, which I brought for you right here, just, just a quick reminder. Um, and so we're going to do the first um, term plus the last term. So that's going to be negative 8 plus 27 divided by 2. Multiply that by the number of terms, which was 6. And the rest of this is just what simplification. Negative 8 plus 27 is going to be, oh, uh, what, 19, I guess. So 19 over 2. I guess we could have canceled the 2 and the 6 and made it a 3. And then 3 times 19 is 57. So there you go. Um, arithmetics, I think, have been covered pretty well. Um, let's take a and look at those last four problems, which were the geometrics. Geometrics are always the ones that cause people more concern. So if you're struggling with them right now, feel no, uh, feel no guilt on that. Um, we already worked at number 13. So why don't we just work out like number 14 and then maybe because it's alternating number 16, okay? Um, so number 14 is, we're gonna start with the formula AN, right? Which is, um, the first term, 5, multiplied by the common ratio. It looks like that one's tripling, doesn't it? Times 3 times 3 to get from 5 to 15 to 45. So 3 to the uh, n minus 1, there's our formula. Now, if I want to solve for how far out 98,415 is, we're going to have to set this equal to that. So let's go ahead and do that. 5 times 3 to the n minus 1 is equal to 98,415. We're going to need to divide by 5 to get rid of that uh, multiplier. 98,415 divided by 5. Is 19... 683, 19, 683. All right, that's as far as we can go without logarithms. So let's go log our base. It's being raised to the x1 up there is 3. The argument is 19, 683. And that's equal to the exponent n minus 1. Um, I would go ahead and convert this into natural log. This, um, change of base because I would just practice like it's going to be on a test and we don't have that nice option on our calculator. I'll go ahead and add the one over and we know that n is equal to natural log of 19683 divided by 3. 
which is what natural log 19683 divided by natural log of three is nine. Nice. So now that we know that that is nine, we can figure out that n is 10. All right. So um, I'll make a note of that right here. Because I'm limited on space here, I'm going to clear this so that we can finish our problem. So, um, summation statement from n equals 1 to n equals 10 of 5 times 3 to the n minus 1. So we're going to add 10 terms of these, starting by plugging in a 1, ending by plugging in a 10. Our formula tells us to um, take the uh, first term, which is 5, and multiply that by 1 minus the common ratio, okay, raised to the n power. This is why we had to find this. The, the, Number one reason we had to find this is because if you, if you don't have that, you can't finish the formula, right? And then over just one minus r. So n time, or first term times one minus r to the n divided by one minus r. Um, the, this can simplify a little bit by just saying, hey, the bottom's just gonna be negative two. So I, I could just call that negative five halves, I think if I pull the negative two out. And what I really need to do is do the 1 minus 3 to the 10th. And that's where the calculator comes in. So why don't we finish this up on the calculator. Um, negative 5 halves. I could have done negative 2.5, of course, right? And we're going to multiply that by... 1 minus 3 raised to the 10th power. And we get uh, 147,620. Could I have checked it using this? Absolutely. Um, we could have said we're going from 1 to 10. Of five times three to the x minus one and the calculator will do the dirty work for you you can see it's exactly the same answer however um you're just not going to have that functionality on the test so i would absolutely use it to check your homework but please don't fall into a false sense of security um, that you're going to have that on any kind of an assessment all right um, all right, so the last thing, let's just look at either 15 or 16 here. I guess we said 16 since it was an alternating um, uh, sequence. And here's the thing to, to keep in mind. They actually uh, hook you up with pretty much the answer right here. They basically tell you what's happening. Notice it's the first term, okay? And to get from 42 to 7, I divide by 6, actually negative 6, right? And then from 42... Uh, and then from negative 7 to 7, 6, I divide by negative 6. We're dividing by negative 6 each time. Well, um, that's not how uh, we usually write that. It's this division problem. We usually write it as multiplying by a fraction. So that's why the common ratio is 1 sixth, and in fact, negative 1 6 because it's an alternating sequence. So they basically give you the formula right off the bat. Our formula is going to be um, sum of the formula 42 times negative 1 sixth raised to the n minus 1. We just need to figure out how far out this is. Well, if we think about it, this should give me a key right here, shouldn't it? Since 42 to the uh, times 
negative one six and 42 times negative one six are the same, we should just be able to set nine equal to n minus one. If nine is equal to n minus one, and I just add one to each side, we have, just like we had a number 14, 10 total terms we're gonna be adding together, okay? So um, they, they pretty much hook you up here. The tricky part here is really just gonna be using the formula because when I, when I uh, convert this into, uh, well, I guess I didn't need to because they gave it to me, but with a, normally with a negative or alternating sequence, when you um, need to solve for the uh, n value, um, you have to get rid of the negatives, as I mentioned in the, uh, the examples the other day. You have to get rid of the negatives while you solve the logarithm because you can't have negatives in logarithms. In this case, I just solved for the exponent, so I really did save some, some work there. So what is this going to be? It's going to be the first term, 42 times 1 minus, now be careful here, um, negative 1, 6 is being raised to the 10th, right? That's what we found right here. Um, and I'm going to be really careful with parentheses. Even if I put it in my calculator, I'm going to be really careful with parentheses. I don't want these negatives to cancel before I can take it to the 10th power. That would really throw that off. Um, on the bottom, you don't really have to worry about it because it's just straight subtraction. All right, 42 times um, 1 minus negative 1 sixth to the 10th over, and then 1 plus 1 sixth or 6 6 plus 1 six. that's going to be 7 6 now. And you could actually, uh, you know, reduce that. You could, you could pull it up to the top, I say six sevenths, and that'll cancel with the 42. I think it'll just give you a 36, wouldn't it? Um, when the 40, 42 over seven is six times six is 36, but we still have to deal with this one minus negative one six raised to the 10th all the way through. So you're gonna need your calculator eventually. Um, and if you wanted to put it in right from the first step, as long as you've, as long as you've um, shown where the n comes from, as long as you've written the summation statement and set it equal to this, then you're in good shape. You can really plug this into your calculator right off the bat if you want, although it does simplify a little bit. And so let's uh, just for our very last uh, little bit of work here, plug this into the calculator and verify what we get. So it was 36 multiplied by 1, subtract, I'm going to use parentheses again, negative 1 sixth, and that's being, I'm going to be raised to the 10th power. Okay, um, and you get a lovely fraction. Um, that would be fine. I, I would accept that as an answer, a reduced fraction. But if you uh, approximate that to three decimal places, you'll get 36 point something something. I think this one might be 36.000. It's already rounding it all the way off to 36 at this point, although we know that this value right here is not zero. So um, I think it's so, one six to the tenth is so small that we're barely subtracting anything from one. So it's basically like 36 times one, but it's not. So um, I think 36.000 would be our approximate value on the bound. Um, hopefully going over some of these has helped. Um, I would be happy, as I said earlier, to go over um, more of them for you uh, later today. I'll post a, a meet again uh, a little before three o'clock, check the website. And I'll either put a link to Jamboard or possibly I might try a Google Meet today, um, see if that's a little bit more um, easier to uh, work problems out on. Um, today, I've got uh, page 216 for you to continue your practice with sequences and series. Uh, the first six problems are just going to be writing summation um, statements. Uh, some of them are finite, a couple of them are infinite, but, um, but that's uh, just, just writing statements, okay? Um, they're not all arithmetic or geometric, like the fractional ones. 
Um, you may have two different powder resins, one for the numerator or one for the uh, denominator. So keep that in mind. Go back and look at the examples we did with summation statements. Um, but most of your work is really going to come from the, the last 12 problems. Uh, I guess it's the last 14 problem. Um, and these are, it, it, it actually says this, um, it says these are all either arithmetic or geometric. But this time, instead of having one section of one and one section of the other, like in the textbook, they really are scrambled a little bit. So one thing you're going to want to be able to do right away is, is uh, um, be able to identify what kind. Like this one right here, from 5 to 19, it all doesn't, it's not a multiple, but it does go up 14. And then you can see that this is arithmetic because it continues to increase by 14 each time. On the other hand, uh, we take a look at number 16, and it looks like each time we're going to double and um, switch the sign. So that's going to be an alternating sequence with a common ratio of negative 2. So I would like you to uh, continue practicing your sequences in series uh, today. And um, do me a favor as you uh, finish up your assignment uh, at some point today, hopefully. If you could buy like 7 o'clock tonight, um, shoot me a, uh, uh, any problems that you would like me to go over for you uh, in a video. I, it'll probably make it a little more efficient, maybe a shorter video. If most of you guys are just asking like the same four or five problems, I can hit those for you and that'll save a little time. But, um, but we could also bring them to Google Meet again or Jamboard or whatever tomorrow at 3. Uh, that's another thing you can do. I um, hope um, you guys are hanging in there, not going too stir crazy, and um, we will um, see you soon. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and give you the answers really quickly here at the end. Remember, you can go through here and pause in the video and take a look. Um, but I think it would be helpful for you to know if you're on the right track. I actually typed these up in exactly kind of the format that I would like to see the work. It doesn't show solving for the end value at the top of the summation statement. Um, that would be that little side work. So if you need to go over some of that, let me know. But there's the first 10 answers. And here are the next five answers. And then finally, the last five answer. So why don't you check yourself uh, as you go, see how you're doing. Let me know what problems I can go over for you tomorrow morning in a little video. And um, then I think tomorrow I will have a, an application uh, video for you. We'll do some apps uh, of conic sections. Uh, hang in there. Hope, uh, hope you're doing all right.